edition of the Steve Malsberg Show, and I am here to report that outside our Midtown Manhattan studios, it is pitch black outside. That's because we turned the clock back. You see, you thought you were going to like it. You were going to get an extra hour of sleep. You were all giddy and happy. Uh, but now it's uh, darker an hour earlier. Plus, it continues to get darker and will for the next oh, six or seven weeks, probably seven weeks. And then on December 21st, you have the shortest day of the year, and then it starts getting lighter again. It's crazy. Anyway, uh, welcome back. Um, uh, we are joined soon, as soon as we are, I'll let you know, uh, by Talib Starks. Talib Starks is American thinker, columnist, author of The Uncivil War. He's also, uh, well, yeah, The Uncivil War, uh, Blacks versus the N-Word. And it, it's it's the N-word with stars on it, so it's not the full N-word. Anyway, um, he did a piece on American Thinker uh, asking the question, is a race war occurring? Now, you may recall we had on the author of White Girl Bleed a Lot, uh, Colin Flaherty, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And he documented in that book instance after instance after instance of, of black on white crime or black on Asian crime. Uh, or black on gay crime. And, and you read more and more about these incidents uh, all over the country, r- roaming gangs or just small uh, couple of kids or a couple of teenagers uh, beating up white people. This is for Trayvon, whatever it is. And um, uh, according to Talib, Dr. Thomas Sowell, uh, among others, have uh, insinuated or stated, quote here, initial skirmishes in that race war have already begun, a black and white race war. Do we have him? Am I just talking? Or I don't know. If I'm waiting I'm, I'm to see if we have Not yet. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, so, um, and, and then uh, Talib Starks goes on to say that, um, um, well, he's quoting, uh, he's quoting Thomas Sowell. Initial skirmishes in that war have already begun and have, in fact, been going on for some years. But public officials pretend that it's not happening. And the mainstream media seldom publish it at all, except in ways that conceal what is really taking place. Then he goes to Alan West, uh, our friend, who echoed Dr. Soul's sentiment. He writes by f- uh, further adding, we were supposed to be living in a post-racial America since we elected the first African-American president. That's hardly the case. Now, uh, Talib, though, uh, believes that uh, even though uh, these, um, these uh, gentlemen uh, demonizing, uh, are, are demonizing the black community for not being, uh, you know, griev- grievance industry members or stockholders, he respects them. They're straight shooting realists. And he says, as a black man, uh, he understands that racial solidarity shouldn't supersede critical thinking. But despite his admiration, he disagrees with their assessment that continued black on white violence indicates a present or future race war. So um, I, 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 I hope we could get him on the phone because with our hard break set up now, uh, time is ticking away. So is he not answering or... What? With the phone. Okay. All right. Uh, hopefully, if we can't get him today, then uh, we will uh, get him back uh, at another time, either later in this hour or, or tomorrow or something. Um, so put that on hold. But it's v- a very interesting conversation, and I hope we do uh, do get to have it. Now, um, one other thing that I told you about earlier in the show was uh, the, the – um, the um, election and Barack Obama in Virginia. Uh, there's two. There are two gubernatorial elections tomorrow. One is in New Jersey. Chris Christie uh, running against uh, uh, Mary Buono. I will be voting for the Democrat Mary Buono to send Chris Christie a message, and that message is: you're not going to win by 30 percent as a Republican, as a phony Republican uh, who now favors in-state tuition for the children of illegals, among other things. Um, okay, let us uh, let us uh, shift gears back to the piece. Uh, at the American Thinker by Talib Starks, and uh, welcome him in. Hello, Talib. How are you, sir? Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. No, it's my pleasure, and I, I'll, I'll hold you over uh, another segment if you could stay because we started this late and we have a hard break coming up in about four minutes. So I, I already talked uh, about uh, the beginning of your piece uh, at American Thinker, Is a Race War Occurring? And I, I, I quoted from the article that you wrote where you quote Thomas Sowell and Alan West uh, and how you respectfully disagree with them. Uh, so what would you call and what do you believe the reasons are for the um, the increase uh, in, in black on white crime in this country? Oh, OK. Well, I, I wrote the article and, and, and like you said, I disagree with the notion that it's 
it's indicative of a race war. I mean, uh, first and foremost, a race war requires at least two participating races. And the, uh, the black and white violence is overwhelmingly black. It's a one-sided affair. I look at this as uh, more so insurgent attacks, more so than war. Um, you know, I look in, and I also mentioned in an article that this payback is due to a seemingly endless gripe that blacks have against whites. And, you know, with slavery, Jim Crow, et cetera, um, and it never, it's, 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 it's a smokeless fire that never seems to die. Um, and then you add the grievance merchants, the, the reoccurring grievance movies that are seemingly being, uh, that comes out once a year, um, the Butler, the Help, Fruitvale Station, et cetera. And um, blacks look at a lot of these uh, attacks, such as uh, polar bear hunting, the knockout game, and they don't bat an eye. It's not, it's not anything significant. It's more or less whites are getting what they deserve for um, a lot of the institutionalized racism, slavery, and the other gripes. Yeah, so you, where you differentiate from uh, Thomas Sowell and, and, and from, from Alan West, I guess, is that, as you said, you, you said that it's, it's, it's considered, and you, you threw that in casually, but it's, it, it stuck out at me in the article that you wrote, the column that you wrote, uh, that it's payback. Um, and, and, and promoted by the likes of, uh, uh, of those kinds of movies. You talked about Jamie Foxx and, and, and yeah. uh, Django Un Un Unchained. And, um, right. but is it not also promoted maybe in a roundabout way by the populist um, uh, rhetoric uh, espoused by our fine president who ran as there's no blue America and red America, there's only one America, we're all purple. He was the post-racial president. He was going to bring us all together. But from day one, or actually before day one when he was running and he uttered, uttered the words in Philadelphia, if they bring a knife to the fight, I bring a gun, not racially, but just uh, politically speaking, uh, he's been nothing but the great divider uh, even when it comes to race, as was the case in 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 Boston with uh, with the uh, Cambridge police officers, and uh, in other circumstances, uh, culminating with Trayvon Martin. Oh, absolutely! I've written several articles uh, about uh, the president President Obama's uh, race baiting and his and the jabs, the slights he make towards uh, uh, white America, and he it's kind of like dog whistles for Black Americans, and that's why they overwhelmingly support him uh, on every endeavor. I also mentioned an article um, where um, I, I say that George Zimmerman has just as much white in him as the president. However, the president's whiteness seems to be dismissed, whereas George Zimmerman's whiteness was just enough whiteness for him to be demonized. Uh, and so, and I also mentioned that uh, President Obama's policies will hurt, hurt the black community in ways that George Zimmerman will never hurt the black community, thousands of ways. So perhaps we were demonizing the wrong guy. Yeah, no, uh, ab absolutely. And I, 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 want, I want you to stick around. Could you stick around through the break? Sure. Okay, because there's more I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you more about, since you brought that up, I want to talk to you about, you know, when the president said, uh, if, if he, if if uh, Trayvon Martin was my son, or, or if I had a son, he would look, like, he would probably look like Trayvon. To me, that is as racist as as as. I mean, imagine if I said if the president had a son, he would look like Trayvon. Why? Why would he look wow. like Trayvon? But let's stay where you are. We'll come right back to you. We're talking to uh, Talib Starks, American thinker, columnist, author of uh, Amazon bestseller, The Uncivil War. And we're coming back. You want to weigh in, 877-NEWSMAX, 877-NEWSMAX. You consider the increase of uh, black on white uh, violence and crime to be um, a, a race war? Or do you agree with, uh, with Talib? On the Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV and radio.